Yo, we are back. What is up, guys? My name is Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking. We're learning Git and source control. So in the last like three videos, we cloned a repo, we committed to the repo, and then we talked about staging and stashing inside that repo. So if you don't know what any of that is, watch the earlier videos on that playlist. They build up to this one. So, so far, all of the changes that we have made in our code base have been local. So remember, we have this idea of a remote repo and a local repo. We have the version on our computer and the version on GitHub. And so, so far, every time that we've committed our changes, we have committed them locally. So the local version has that history and understands those changes, but the remote version does not. So in this video, we're going to talk about pushing and pulling. So pushing is taking our local changes and pushing it to the remote repo. Pulling is doing the reverse. It is taking the changes from the remote repo and pulling it down to our local version on our computer. So this video will help you get much more comfortable understanding when to push and when to pull. I would say most of the time when we're working in projects and we're committing our changes, we usually just push our changes immediately. So two videos back when we committed those changes, we still haven't pushed them yet. Most of the time I would commit and then push immediately. We'll talk a little bit about that as we go. We just haven't pushed it yet because we are still obviously learning. But for the rest of this course, we are gonna now follow this flow of making changes, committing changes, and then pushing them up to GitHub. So this video is just an introduction on how to push and how to pull. And then over the rest of the course, we're gonna continually do this every single video so you'll get really comfortable. So with that said, let's jump into Xcode and push our changes. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking. We are in a playlist where we're learning Git and source control. And if you're just joining, you should probably watch the earlier videos in this playlist. So far, we have created an account on GitHub and Git Kraken. We've created a repository and we've cloned a remote repository. We've learned how to commit. We've learned how to stage and unstage as well as stash. Uh, and now we're going to look at pushing and pulling. It's all really starting to come together now. Let's write some quick notes here, what we're about to learn. So push is going to be, let's call this, I want to use the word push, but without using the word push, let's say send local commits to remote repo. And then pull is fetch remote commits to local repo. So I brought up this earlier where we have my computer and we have GitHub, earlier in this series, we cloned the repo. So the first time, if you want to access the repo, you need to clone it so you have a version of that on your computer. So cloning is like the one-time process of, let me copy all the files and get this system set up on my computer. So first you clone it. But after you clone it, and while you're working throughout the day and throughout the week and the months, people are making changes. Maybe you're making changes, maybe other people are making changes. And we no longer need to clone because we already have our local version. Now we just want to push and pull. So this arrow is pushing and pulling. So when I want to send something from here, from my local version to the remote repo, I will push it to the cloud. When I want to get changes that have happened on the remote and bring them back down to my local, I will pull them from the cloud. So we push to the remote repo, we pull from the remote repo. So. Let's come back in here. Let's commit this before we move forward. Option command C. Let's just say clean um, updates to documentation and stage and commit. When I go and look back at my content here, let's go back to the repositories tab here. I can see this little number came up. So the main branch is the branch that we are on, but for some reason we are up 18 points. What's happening here? Up is describing ahead, ahead of the remote repo. We are 18 commits in front of the remote version. So if I look at Git Kraken, I can see the remote version again is down here. And I'm guessing there's 18 commits to where we are at right now. So this is obviously back in time and this is current. So we are now ahead of the remote repo. And you could imagine if we were behind the repo, if there were changes on the remote that were not locally, we would be behind the repo. 
So this arrow would then be a down arrow, signaling that we are behind the current branch in the remote, in the remote repo. So this 18 though is specific to the main branch here. So we are only working on the main branch right now because I'm trying to keep it simple. In the next video, we're going to talk about branching. And in terms of being behind or in front of a branch, we are talking about the branch in general, not a specific commit. So this main branch has two versions. One version is local, one version is remote. The local version is here, the remote version is here. So we are 18 commits ahead of the main branch. So the first question is, the, so the first and obvious thing is, all right, well, how do we sync these up? Well, generally when you commit, after you commit, you also want to push. So there's a button in Kraken called push that so you can click right here. But I'm going to do it in Xcode because this is obviously so easy. You guys can figure it out. But in Xcode, after we commit, we basically just integrate and push. It's going to ask us, where do you want to push these changes to? This automatically is going to be on the branch that you're currently on, which is almost always where you want to push to. So generally speaking, we want to push to the branch that we are on and we'll click push. Just like that, that simple. We now see the, arrow, the number went away over here on the left side because we are on par with where the branch is on the remote repo. If I look at Git Kraken, that tag is no longer down here. It's back up here. So I can see here the computer representing my local version as well as my profile there is the icon for my GitHub account. So both the local version and the GitHub account are both at this commit here. So they're on par and we're good to go. When I go and open up GitHub, if I refresh the page real quick, I can actually see the last commit that affected each of these files. So if I come in here, I can see the last commit. We didn't do any commits in this folder. That's why it still says the initial commit. The content view, the last one was this clean. Home view is the last one was this feature. So I can see here that this is now getting updated as well. So if I look at my source control, I can see actually there's 20 commits in this main branch. So I'm on the main branch. We can switch branches here, but we don't have any other branches right now. And this actually has 20 commits. And if I click on it, I can actually see all of the commits. So this is where your commit messages were important, right? Like other developers are going to now see this and they're going to see all of your commit messages. So in a future video, we're going to talk about squashing and merging because there's, there's times where you can basically make crappy commit messages like this if it's only going to affect you and you're not going to put that into the actual repo. So there's a time where you might want to do this just for speed. But if it's going to go into the remote repo, you probably want to keep it clean where you have like feature commits and things like that. We're going to talk about merging commits in a future video. Just wanted to show you guys that this is here and our whole commit history is here. So if I were to delete this from my computer and then reclone this project, it's going to have all of these commits saved to it already. So that's the cool part about version controls. I can always see, I can see all of the changes that I've made in any of these, and I can go back to any of them at any time. We're going to talk about going back in time in a future video as well. But so we've learned how to push. Let's jump back into Xcode. Let's do one more. So the common flow of what you're going to do is make a change. Let's just delete this. Maybe you want to change this. I'm going to option command C. Let's add, let's make this a feature, rename, subscribe button. Let's stage all, let's commit that change. Let's push that change remotely. So that's the flow you know most of the time you're going to do. Stage, commit, push, stage, commit, push, stage, commit, push. And just like that, we can now see that it has happened. I'm going to do it one more time and just watch Git Kraken as I do it, just to show you guys. So here, let's come back in here. Let's add in a Swiftful thinking. Let's do a bug, maybe fix Swiftful thinking text. Let's stage it. Let's commit it. I can see here it committed locally, but it's not on the remote version. And now when I push it, it's going to push to the remote version and get Kraken knows that both are now on this same level here. So that's what pushing is. It's simple as taking my changes, pushing them up, literally pushing them up to the cloud to GitHub. Now we understand pushing, but what about pulling? What does pulling actually mean? So pulling is the reverse. Pulling is there is data on the repo that I've not yet copied to my local version. 
myself or somebody else has committed to the main branch on the remote repo, and I don't have that yet locally. So let's to mimic that real quick. I'm going to open up the repo and I'm going to, let's just go into maybe source control here. And I'm just going to add a file. Let's create a new file. Let's just says testing.swift. I think that's what we can do. And then in here, just put some comments and I'm going to commit changes. So let's do a commit message here. Let's say feature add testing file. And it's going to ask us here, do we want to commit to the main branch or a new branch? We haven't done branching yet. So let's commit directly to the main branch. Let's commit those changes. And now when I look at Git Kraken off the bat, it looks like nothing has changed, right? Because the local version of source control does not know that those changes happened in the remote repo. So if I look here, I can see the testing file was added to the remote repo, but there's nothing about that here. That's kind of weird. So before we actually fix this, let's go into our project. Let's write some code here in Swiftful thinking. Let's change it back to Swiftful. Let's command, let's option command C and let's try to commit this. Let's say feature fix Swiftful thinking text again, and let's stage it. Let's commit it and let's push it. Push to main. Whoa. What is this error? The local repository is out of date. Make sure all changes have been pulled before you can push to this branch. So we know what exactly what happened. There was a change on the remote version that we did not have on our local version. So let's close this before we can do this and let's look here. So when once Git Kraken synced up, we can now actually see it better. Again, this is why I love Git Kraken. I can see here my main branch, what I was trying to do is up here now, right? But the remote version is here because the remote version of the branch got this testing file, but my version of the branch never got it. So now I committed on this local version of the branch, basically bypass or it missed this file here. And so when I tried to push this version up to GitHub, GitHub said, wait a second, buddy. You're not pushing the same history that I have, right? My history shows this file, but you're saying that this file never happened and it's this file was last. So we can't have that conflict happen. So GitHub is saying you need to resolve that conflict before you can actually push and update this branch. In a future video, we're going to talk about branching. And then after that, we're going to talk about merging. So we're going to talk about how to resolve conflicts in a future video. Before right now, what I'm trying to get at is your main, your local version can be out of date with the remote version. And if I look at the repo repositories here, I can see here, my local version is one commit behind the remote repository and as well as one commit ahead of the remote repository. Kind of crazy, kind of confusing, but it's exactly what we see here. Right? So we're, we are missing this commit and we've added this extra commit. So what I want to do is actually pull the changes from GitHub first. So I'm going to come into Xcode and do it first in Xcode. Let's try to integrate and pull. Let's pull from main. And we can see here that it automatically merged those changes into my local main branch. So it automatically pulled those changes down and merge them into my current version. So now this version has both this commit as well as this commit together. And they seamlessly, it, we didn't have any conflicts. So it worked together. And now when I try to push this now, it has that whole history. So I can push it back up to the main branch. I see it now both are pushed to the remote. I'm going to go back into GitHub and I should be able to see it now that both this is my last commit that merge commit and it's been added one more time. What I'm going to do is actually go back into source control here. I'm going to add a file. And just by the way, I would never actually be adding files this way. I, you generally only add files from X, but let's say another test file dot swift and let's just write test and commit these changes and commit these changes. So again, we're back in this place where we've made a commit but our local version does not know about it, right? 
So oftentimes, every time you sit back down on your computer, you want to make sure that you are up to date with the remote version. So eventually here, Great Kraken has synced. I can see that it automatically happened. But if I'm on this main branch and I haven't made any changes yet, so I'm in line with my current version, now I actually want to pull. So give me all of the updates on this branch that were remote updates and pull them into my current history. So again, if I click on this branch, I can see the entire history and all of the commits. And this is the last commit. I don't have the commit I just did on GitHub. But if I integrate and pull it, let's pull it from main. And now we have updated our local version with the remote changes. So now we're back in line again. All right. So again, this video was just pushing and pulling. It's pretty straightforward. Pushing is taking your local commits and pushing them to the cloud or to GitHub. Pulling is the reverse, taking the remote commits and pulling them back down. And source control by default will not let us push or pull if there are conflicts. So if there's conflicts, we're gonna have to resolve the conflicts before we can push and pull and merge and do all that fun stuff. All right, I hope this is making sense. Right now, our local and remote are in line together. And in the next couple of videos, we're going to talk about branching and merging and all of that fun stuff. Thank you guys for watching. As always, my name is Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.